Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Archie Sharp, a man with some fight news in the diary. How are we doing, Archie? Uh, how are you doing, my friend? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm all well. How are you? Yeah, a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, you mentioned to me off camera there before we before we hit record, back in camp and back on back in the ring. Exciting times for yourself. Yeah, exactly that. Look, back in camp. I'm uh, looking forward to getting back out. Hopefully we have some announcement real soon, like within the next few days, maybe today. I don't know. I'm just waiting on a few little final tweaks. Um, but yeah, we'll be out very, very soon. And I'm just I'm just grateful to be back. For yourself. A lot of time out the ring before we've got to this position. You've got something to work towards. That time out the ring, a little bit of frustration, maybe. Yeah, it's been very frustrating not being not being active, um, being out of the ring. Like I was on a really good run, being number one in a WBO. Everything was going so well, and then like I said, I just come across a few few teething problems, should I say? And then it obviously cost me not to be as active and in the fights that we wanted. But look. It's been no mileage on, on my career. So even though I'm I'm 29 next week, I'm still a young, fit, fresh 29. So it's not um it's not it's not the end of the world. It just gives me more time to kind of grow with my team with uh, Richard, Ian and Roy Jones. And we just keep growing and uh, um there's yeah, so it's been more time for ourselves and, and you'll see that in the performance next time I'm out. I was gonna say the time where you've not had the fight date, I mean, I assume you've been keeping busy and keeping yourself in shape and a chance to gel with your training team. And we know that takes time for fighters, but if you're doing it without a fight there, there's less jeopardy. When the fight comes around, you'll be ready to go. Yeah, exactly that. So um it just gives us like I say, it gives that bit of time to bond um and just practice and keep working on things. And I'm just looking forward now to being back on a big platform, back on the TV and um, and yeah, showcasing what, what I've been working on. You talk about Roy a little bit there. What's the relationship like with him? He's obviously trained some of the top names in the world. For him to have the confidence in you must be a real confidence boost for yourself. Yeah, exactly that. Look, Roy, Roy, is, Roy as you know, is one of the greatest to, to lay a set of gloves up. There's been a few, I think we've, with him being such a big name in the sport and a big public figure, there's always going to be criticism and there's always going to be targets on his back about regarding training. Um, oh, he's a great fighter, but is he a great coach and all this? You, you're going to get that. And I've had it a lot since I've been with Roy. But what what I say to people is that what me and Roy work on is just about adding to my game. Um, so with my sort of style, with the how I'm very unorthodox, it, it gels really well. Um, and there's a few things that Roy has not tried to change me. He's always tried to do is add and allow me to do things in a better perspective. What I, so, so what I've been doing, but a more uh, better perspective so I can start sitting down on my shots a bit more um, and just doing, and just basically polishing up what, what we add. And um, if I could just take 5% of what that man done and add it to my, to my game, that's what it's all about, you know? So it's just all about adding. And then we've got, Obviously, Richard, who I've been with for years, and uh, Ian Weaver, who was a, who was an outstanding amateur himself on the GB for a very long time, um, and he's got bags and bags of knowledge himself. So it, it's gelled really well. And Roy, uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. It's really it's really good to see how they train at that elite level because obviously I'm just learning on the job. I'm just taking every fight as it comes. But for someone who's been there, done it, got a t-shirt, and what people dream of doing. It's really interesting to see their perspective on things. I was going to say, the experience, you're an experienced fighter yourself, but the level that Roy Jones has boxed at and the, the guys in the gym as well, that's sort of the standard I'm sure that you want to reach. And you've got that example there, whether they're trainer or whether they're fighters. And you've got that sort of line to follow, I guess. Yeah, exactly that. Like there's... There's questions that I've always wanted to know, like when you watch the Sugar Rays, the Roy Jones, the all the Pomodalis, the Floyd Mayweather's, you 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 question things, you know, you want to know certain elements what they've done in their training to kind of bring out the best of themselves, and that's what I, I was very fortunate to have that at first hand. So if I say to my Roy, when you was getting ready for James Tony, how did you do this, or what did you do different to this, and I know. Because he's done it, he's lived it, and he's done it. So now I can pick pick his brains on things, and um and what works for him. Some things will work for me, but some won't. So we just we just we just um going going ahead with it, and um I'm in great shape, and I'm excited to to showcase it. 
those big fights, I know you mentioned them before in previous interviews, whether it be Oscar Valdez or whether it be a Shakur Stevenson, do you believe this is the year for those fights? When you've got back up and running, you've got one, maybe two fights under your belt. Later this year, we can see you in a, a big, big fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I've been saying these names for a very long time, as as everyone knows and yourself, you know. But I mean, it's even more encouraging. Like when Valdez or Navarrete, Navarrete have boxed recently, Roy's been straight on the phone and said, "Right, let's make this happen and get it on the line now." Like we want, what well, we can do this. Like it's, it's not. He's very confident in me beating all of these fighters. Um, even with the Shakur Stevenson's, like. He rung me after Shakur's last performance, and he said, "Right, did you watch it?" I said, "Yeah, watched it." Right, and then we're and then we're on the same song sheet singing, saying, "Right, this is what we need to do. This is what you would, you know." So he's very confident, and he and he just wants me to get out now and and, and do it because he's seen seen what I'm doing, and we're still progressing. And for him to ring me after these sorts of fights and say to me, "Right, this is it. Like, let's get it. Let's make it happen." He obviously believes in it. He's not going to put his name to something if he's if he doesn't believe. Why haven't those fights, in your words, happened yet? Because you've been at the top of those rankings and you've been in a position for those fights for, as you say, quite a while now. Yeah, I just think it just boils down to pure politics, mate, to be honest with you. It's just, I've been there. Uh, I've been in the gym. There's been no reason for me not to have these fights. Uh, the WBO had me in the rankings for two years at number one. And since then, there's been two or three people who have skipped the queue and gone straight up. Never is protected really until twenty February twenty five, I believe, until he fights a mandatory. But now he's going up to lightweight. He still gets to hold the one thirty belt, so it's not actually vacant. Hence the reason why um, Oscar Valdez and Wilson box for an interim. Even that, there I was refused an interim at the beginning of the year. I've got a letter from the WBO saying that there won't be no interims or any volu- uh, final eliminators like for me and Albert Bell. I've got it in writing at the beginning of the year, and then within a couple of months, all of a sudden they've granted that fight to be for an interim world title. So it is literally beyond me. Um, but look, we're, like I say, that's that's been and gone now. You know, we just move forward and get the right team behind us. And we and we kick on, and hopefully, God willing, that these big fights will happen really soon. We know Matchroom versus Queensbury is a thing that's in the book now. Really exciting opportunities for the fighters that will be on those cards. Was there any sort of talk or any calls around getting yourself on that card? Um, that no, just not really. I think the main thing for myself at the minute is just getting back active, um, and getting myself back in the mix because obviously, with the inactivity, people have kind of like dismiss my name if you like because because of the inactivity and it's just is what it is it's business so um the main thing is just getting back on a platform with a big promoter again uh and a team that believe in what i can do and push me forward for the big fights but yeah they're definitely fights that i'm i'm very intrigued i'm looking at i'm looking very closely at jordan gill and Delva barrett this week uh next this weekend yeah this weekend yeah um so yes, yeah, so I'll be looking at that. I've been sparring Jordan anyway, uh, for this fight. We've got a few, I've done a few spars with Jordan, shall I say, for this fight. Um, but yeah, winner of that. It's very interesting. Um, you've got Cordina Kakachi, which is happening, coming in. Uh so be interesting. So there, there's a lot of things, but like like I've said, um, I believe I'm the best super featherweight in the country in and in the world. So it's just a matter of me doing it now, you know. So I've talked a big talk and said how I believe I'm the best, and I will I will show that when I get the opportunities. The thing is, I haven't had the opportunities to do what I know I can do is due to I've took I've had fights that have not really been on my radar, which I believe can be risky fights. I mean, that it showed in a couple of fights that I've had previously. You know, like um, I just haven't got out of bed for them. You mentioned a couple of fights coming up. We'll start with Jordan Gill and Zelfa Barra up in Manchester. I mean, what Jordan Gill did against Michael Conlon was incredible, really. He was a, a, a big underdog in that fight. He'll be the underdog again coming in against Zelfa Barra. Do you think he can do it again? There's no reason why not. You know, that it, it, every fight brings challenges, different challenges. Um, and like you say, he's come with a great win against Conlon. He's fighting a different sort of style of fighter. Um, he's fighting a more reactive fighter and a counter puncher. Um, since Zelfa was a great kid, as we know, we've seen it with uh, Rakimov, I believe, 
it, there was a certain time where he, I think he started to fade off a little bit and then obviously they engage a lot more, which will be in more favour for uh, Jordan Gill. So I think it'd just be a matter of Jordan uh, being cautious for the first few rounds and then if they end up getting into a bit of a dust-up and, uh, and, and do end up trading shots, it could be... It's a free fall from because they both can punch for the weight, um, and they've shown that. So, and you're and you're getting it, with, um, you're throwing and you're receiving with eight ounce gloves on, so anything can happen. So if you, if you start getting into a 50 50 punch up in the middle of the ring, then it's a 50, it's any man's game. And speaking of Barry Smith the other day, and he was saying the people that get in with Jordan are surprised by how much of a big puncher he is. When you were uh, shared those sparring sessions, was there any surprise on your end how big of a puncher he was? Uh, he's he's ever like I said to everyone else uh in this game in this sport. I've I've been in the ring with a lot of big fighters and a lot of big punchers, strong fighters. Um, got Pierce O'Leary who's a, who's a major puncher at that world weight. You got Sam Lopes at lightweight who was my sparring partner for two years, who can also obviously punch as as he's got thirteen and thirteen. I think he is now. So I've been in the ring with a lot of fighters, and when people say can they punch, I think. When you've got eight ounce gloves on, it doesn't matter if you can punch or can't punch. You know, you you're getting, you're throwing them shots. It's gonna hurt no matter what it is. So, uh, but yeah, you can throw a shot. To 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 your question about can he pack a punch, you can throw a shot, and you know that today he, he he hits hard enough to respect. You don't want to be like careless with your work, you know, because if you get tagged, there's the same with anyone. You get tagged with eight ounce gloves on, it's gonna you're gonna get um there's a possibility of getting exposed. But yeah, you definitely don't want to be careless with him. He can throw an and vice versa with Zelfa Barrett. Um, he obviously hits hard enough to to gain his respect, and you don't want to be careless jumping in with shots because you're gonna get caught with a counteractive shot. So, um, so yeah, Barry, he said the same thing to me when I was up there. He said, "Oh, did he punch?" And I said, he, 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 he you respect, you know what I mean? He, he definitely gained my respect in the ring. So, that's the main thing, I think. Um, Cordina Kikachi, um, fantastic fight. Obviously, another defence for Joe Cordina. How do you see that one going? How do you analyse it? I think it's an interesting fight. I do. I do actually think it's an interesting fight. Um, I've heard Cordina's getting tired of the weight now. Everyone knows that Kikachi's a big for the weight. So, I don't know how... It's a funny one with Kikachi because I hear so many stories of him inspiring who can seriously punch, apparently. He punched like an all kick on He's a big puncher. But in the in the pro ranks, and in actual fights, he's not showcasing that. So, I don't know if that's due to being down at the weight. I don't know. I don't know. I've heard I've heard some stories. Even I think I heard on BT Sport, um Carl Frampton was praising him highly about his power, saying he can really, really punch. because uh, they were sparring partners for a while and they know each other for, for a very long time. But like you say, in the pro game, I haven't really seen that. He's not been a concussive puncher um or stopping as many as, as what people say he should be doing. So that's what I am interested to see because at some point they are going to meet in the middle. Um and Cordina does get it, and so does both get it um, pretty evenly. So it'd be interesting to see because uh, I don't know. I've got it as a 50 50 fight. I know people are pushing more for Cordina, I think, because of the youth, but I think Kakachi will give anyone an hard fight. Yeah. And for yourself, these big fights we've mentioned, what, what is your promotional situation at the moment? But no, there's things will be happening. Hopefully, really soon I can announce uh, what we're doing. But yeah, I was a free agent for a little while. Um, and yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens in the near future. I think I thought I think I thought because I saw you at one of the saw you at one of the shows the other night. I think it was one yes. of your call shows. Uh, there was a there was a picture going around of me and Frank, because I haven't seen Frank for a little while and I was with Pro Bellum um when I left Frank that then went to disrupt. So I, that's what I was with for a couple of years in contract. But then like I say, I'm a free agent now and I'll see Frank at the show had a good chat. Um, so yeah, it could possibly be a new route. We shall see. Absolutely. Well, hope those big fights do materialise for you, mate. And uh, yeah, speak again soon. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.